Younger voters are not waiting to inherit the future. They're building the future themselves. Young Americans have been on the front lines in the fight to defend the right to vote and expand access to the ballot box for all eligible voters. My name is Jacob Burdick, and yeah, I, I didn't write that. That quote is from a different JB, President Joe Biden. In his address commemorating the anniversary of the 26th Amendment, President Biden offers these words to express the importance of the 26th Amendment, the importance of voting rights being extended to 18, 19, and 20 year olds. During my junior year of high school, I decided to take AP government, although I was not a huge fan of politics at the time, despite my mom being a political science professor. This quickly changed. My AP government teacher lit a fire under me that no one has been able to extinguish. Ever since then, I've come home, watched the news, read articles, formed opinions, and repeated every single day. I distinctly remember him saying on the first day of class that we would never see politics the same way again. He challenged all of us to insert ourselves into our democratic system, to pick a campaign and volunteer. This push from him and my drive for wanting to help others led me to canvas for Jeffrey Mims, a local politician running for mayor of Dayton who recently won this past November. To me, Politics is not about argument or debate like you see so often on social media. It's about helping the people. This is what drove me to knock on doors, reach out to people, be welcomed into homes, eat freshly baked cookies, even have doors slammed in my face, all to promote the sacred right to vote, the seedling of our democracy. The 26th Amendment, ratified in July of 1971, expanded the right to vote to 18, 19, and 20 year olds. President Nixon, along with the rest of the country, believed in younger voters, in college kids. He stated during the signing ceremony, the reason that I believe in young Americans is that you will infuse into this country some idealism, some courage, some stamina, some high moral purpose that this nation always needs. You see, younger voters were coming, and President Nixon was following the politician's creed. There go my people, so I must find out where they are going so that I can lead them. While many adults blame college kids' lack of voting on apathy, I see a much different perspective. So does 538.com. According to a poll they conducted in 2016, 85% of older people intended to vote, compared to 78% of college kids. That's pretty close. However, they also found that college voters compared to older voters are considerably more likely to have to wait in line more than an hour to vote, are six times more likely to not be able to get off work to vote, and are three times more likely to not be able to find their polling place. I'm 18 years old. I'm a senior in high school. I can guarantee you that I will vote in the November election, but I cannot guarantee you where I will attend college, what my daily schedule will look like, if I have a car on campus, or where my polling place will be. These questions are all barriers to the voting system and are questions that most Americans don't have to answer. How many more younger voters are in this same boat? In the 2020 November election, there were 13,752,000 votes cast by voters younger than 24. How many more young voters would vote, would all come at once, if we made college age voting just a little easier instead of making it harder? Don't tell me it's apathy. There are real barriers to the voting system. Politicians who stand to lose elections if younger voters crash their party are passing laws as I speak to limit, to complicate, and to suppress that vote. States have passed severely strict voting regulations, such as 
allowing only one address, disallowing online voter registration, limiting early voting, even eliminating absentee ballots, all of which impair the college vote more than any other single group of voters. In Florida, the state legislature passed laws abolishing polling places without, quote, sufficient parking facilities, unquote. Every polling place eliminated by that legislation was on a college campus. Isn't that ironic? Have you ever been to a college campus or seen the parking facilities? How long were you driving around campus until you found a place to park? If your group votes, politicians pay attention to you. College voters' issues are ignored because we haven't voted. We have a horrible track record of showing up to the polls in May and November. What would happen if all college voters came at once? What would happen if we crashed the party? Politicians listen to members of the NRA and AARP because they show up. They deserve that reputation. So politicians continue to say, there go my people. So I must find out where they are going so that I can lead them. We have not yet earned our seat at the table. College voters have, historically, wasted their chance to vote, their chance to change the narrative, the narrative that they just don't care, and therefore crafting policies that appeal to younger voters does not need to become a priority. If college voters show up to the polls in record numbers, we change that narrative. Voting, just like the right to an attorney in public education, is a right. These rights have been guaranteed and accommodated. We make every effort to give the accused an attorney if they cannot afford one. That's their right. We make every accommodation to those learning in school with a disability. President Eisenhower made every accommodation to protect students' rights. By sending in the National Guard to Arkansas to protect young black students who are being forced out of school by their state legislature. Their right to public education was being denied, and he stood with them. Why can't we stand with younger voters? We all agree that voting is a right. However, we do not make every effort, every accommodation, to protect the fundamental right in our Constitution. If there is a group of Americans, young or old, educated or not, white, black, or brown, who are having difficulties voting, I want to stand for them. If nothing changes, this issue will affect my children, grandchildren, and beyond. What will I tell them that I did? What will we tell them that we did when we had the opportunity to stand with them? And the opportunity is here. Once you are involved in something, you suddenly become more passionate about it. You have a dog in the fight, so they say. Well, the same can be said for voting. I urge you to become involved in your political system. Participate in clubs. Pre-register other voters. Talk to your friends or neighbors about marching for change. Or talk about voting. This past summer, as I was knocking on doors, I would go through towns that I lived in, and that automatically created a bond with each individual before I reached their front door. What would happen if college kids went through college campuses or dorms advocating for voting or for a particular candidate or issue? How would this affect the electorate of the next election? Consider in 1920, when women were granted the right to vote. How politicians suddenly became interested in women's rights because they knew they were all coming at once. Think of the possibilities that could stem off of this if college kids were able to participate with this same enthusiasm. President Obama writes in his memoir, if I remain hopeful, 
it's because I've learned to place my faith in my fellow citizens, especially those of the next generation, so that I can extend the invitation to remake the world and to bring about an America that finally aligns with all that is best in us. President Obama wanted to extend the invitation. What a beautiful thought. Encouraging the right to vote is important to me. And it's why when I found out I had a choice on my topic, the choice was easy. I'm asking you to get in the game. Educate yourself and others. Review candidates. Review both sides of the argument. Vote. Connect yourself with your community by volunteering to register other voters or to promote a candidate or issue. Even just by retweeting a comment will impact your community. I ask young Americans, pledge with me when we are older, when we are retired, that we will not forget the strength and needs of younger voters. If enough of us pledge to advocate for the younger generation and to stand up for their voting rights, we can change the narrative of college voters. We can drive young voter turnout rates to higher and higher numbers. Polls will see all of us coming at once. Then our leaders will finally be paying attention to the issues important to us. And our leaders will finally be saying, there go my young people. So I must find out where they are going so that I can lead them. Thank you.